Hey YouTube, doing a quick recap of the new war bond, Democratic Detonation. Uh, we have everything unlocked now. I've had some time to play with it. And I gotta say overall, I'm pretty happy with this war bond. There's some inconsistencies and things that I'd like to see improved, but quite happy. Uh, getting into it, first item, the Thermite Grenade. It, it seems to be getting affected by the dot damage bug at the moment, so if you're not the host, the Thermite seems to be basically useless and not working very well. But if you are the host, uh, two Thermites to a Hulk, pretty much anywhere on the body, uh, will slowly tick it to death. Uh, seems to be around seven seconds, throwing two quickly to it. Uh, for a Charger, a little bit more inconsistent. We've been getting really weird results where like sometimes you can use two to kill a charger, sometimes it takes more. Um, basically just need to kind of see where this lands. They need to look into it. It's just very inconsistent because I've seen posts on Reddit saying that, you know, one to two to a Bile Titan's head can kill it. That seems to be maybe a PS5 host bug, but I still need to test that. But it seems like for the vast majority of people, you're spending about five to six to kill a Bile Titan. Doesn't really seem worth it. I... I would find it hard to see people taking it over the impact grenade because the impact grenade can do a lot of what this thing can do even in the best scenarios where the host. So I probably would avoid this until they uh, readjust it. But yeah, I think it will be interesting in the future because it will give the impact probably a run for its money if it's working properly. Going to the next one is the adjudicator. Uh, I've seen a lot of people shitting on this thing real hard on different social media sites. Uh, I don't think it's as bad as people think it is. Some of it is down to the fact that DMRs or marksman rifles in general are not doing super well. And they, in general, need to see a bit of a boost uh, as far as their damage. But also, it's completely getting outclassed by other weapons that have recently been buffed or have been introduced with other war bonds. So uh, the Dominator, for instance, has been recently buffed and is arguably the best dmr in the game by some margin for both bugs and bots if you can get over the fact that it has bad handling the second point is the sickle the sickle is just the better automatic weapon it has essentially unlimited ammo really low recoil good sight and the fact that it has a huge magazine before uh needing to be cooled down or change out its heat sink so if those weapons don't get changed dmrs just in general need to get buffed Good news is, is on the Discord, they recently, I think it was yesterday, started a poll on the Discord saying, uh, do DMRs need a buff? And essentially the overwhelming majority, 80% of people are saying yes. So hopefully in the near future, we'll see like a, just a base DMR buff. So this thing will be more usable. Uh, in its current form, I'd probably place it somewhere like a B minus to a C plus for bugs and a little bit higher to a B to a B plus for automatons. It's not a bad weapon. If you are someone who uses DMRs, you might enjoy it more than the other weapons because it has medium pen uh, and that nice full auto mode for those more panic situations. But if you're someone that doesn't like hitting precise shots and doesn't like DMRs, I would kind of just avoid it. People, I think, saw the trailer and thought, oh, a new assault rifle. It's not an assault rifle. It's just a DMR that has full auto. So a lot of people are using it like an assault rifle, noticing that it's not very good for just spraying at a Devastator, and they're saying it's shit. But if you just get two taps to the head of a Devastator, you kill it. You just have to be more patient and use it a little bit longer ranges and really be precise. It might be more difficult depending on your input method, but I don't think it's as bad as people say. Somewhere in the B range uh, to C plus for the majority of enemies that you fight against. Uh, the armor, uh, they've said on Discord, is uh, not with the right armor passive. It's supposed to be getting uh, the Grenade Engineer uh, perk fairly soon. So it's going to be medium with the Grenade perk. So if you are interested in that, you'll have that soon. Uh, the Extraction Pilot Booster, not a great one. It's only minus 20 seconds on the extraction for a two-minute extraction, and it seems to be 30 for a three-minute extraction if you have the 50% call-in modifier. Not great. Wouldn't recommend unless you are someone that absolutely needs your samples out and you know it's going to be a 50% call-in timer uh, extract. You know, that minus 30 seconds can make the difference of how easy it is for you to get your uh, samples out on those longer extracts. So the armor is light plus grenade armor i would say it's quite good especially if you haven't had the chance to buy the super store light armor that's even lighter than this so if you want a little bit more defensiveness and you like the look not a bad pickup 
The Eruptor is insane. It's literally the baby brother to the auto cannon. It does so many things amazing. Uh, with the right playstyle and the right equipment around it, it can absolutely slay, open, sorry, close bug breaches, destroy fabricators, kill a charger in one to two shots. I'll explain in a second how you do that. While also having some nice quirks to the weapon. So if you take a shot, swap to another weapon, then swap back. You don't have to do the cycling of the bolt animation and you can fire again even faster. Uh, it's an insane weapon. Uh, it does so much. And some people will use it more for utility, but even in bug missions or bot missions, you can use it to slay out. Um, I've been finding a lot of success just like shooting at the opening of a bug breach over and over again, killing enemies. It kills bile spewers insanely fast. It kills most, if not all, tier one enemies in about one shot. Brood commanders aim kind of below them or like towards their chest. So the shrapnel and the explosion explode below them. You can one tap them. Uh, and then for chargers, you can one tap them if they run by you and you aim below their butt. It seems like it's very similar to Overwatch's Hanzo uh, scatter arrow, where if you explode below, it will do its explosion. And then there's a shrapnel mechanic that can fly in all directions. It's kind of like a porcupine, right? It goes in all directions equally. But it seems like if you hit the ground, it almost focuses it upwards, maybe. I'm not 100% sure on that. Still need more testing. But I've noticed the best results of if you can get the charger to run into a wall. And then after hitting the wall, you'll notice their butt slumped down to the ground. It's a really easy shot to the ground. Blows up. It can one-shot the butt of a charger. It's incredibly powerful for that. Honestly, even better than the auto cannon at times at dealing with chargers. Uh, from the front, you can utilize the charger bug when the armor desyncs and you can penetrate uh, their ar leg armor. So you even have that going for you. So even if you miss and you're sometimes hitting the leg, you can sometimes just randomly get a, a one to two shot on the legs. It's so good. Uh, I would easily put this in S plus to S somewhere uh, for bugs and then for bots probably closer to s s minus it's not as effective versus devastators because obviously they have the the gl or sorry the um the shield for heavy devastators and it doesn't consistently one tap devastators you need to more or less hit the head or get some really good shrapnel placement below them uh and it's not amazing versus hulks unfortunately you can hit between their legs and get a little bit of shrapnel up towards the uh, heat sink, but the heat sink is so high up on hulks that it's not a very reliable strat. Um, I will say though, quick tip, use it on those fabricators, use it with an AMR. You basically have like a mini, um, auto cannon paired with AMR, very good combo. And whenever you see a dropship coming in, you can take the, uh, the eruptor out, shoot up to all the bots before they drop down. It's even more effective than shooting down a dropship a lot of times because you will get guaranteed amount of damage on a ton of those enemies because the explosion radius is quite large but also it'll kill all the tier one bots most of the time it'll kill a lot of the atrts before they can even set up and then when the bots fall down maybe an impact grenade or a second shot to mop up a lot it's very good in that situation so yeah really enjoying the eruptor uh one oh one minor one final thing is uh if you are cycling your second last round and you reload, you will both reload and cycle around at the same time. It seems to be doing both animations at the same time. Uh, and you have to do that before your last shot, right? So your second shot going into your last shot. Very effective if you really don't mind wasting that last shot uh, in the magazine for a really fast cycling and getting your reload in. I'm sure they'll fix it at some point, but hey, take advantage of it now. Uh, going into the last page, we have the FS-55 Devastator armor. Nothing special, just looks cool. It's just more explosive resistant armor while heavy. Uh, you've already seen it in your first war bond. I think it was like the second armor we got. Uh, so it just looks cool. Uh, a little disappointing, but, you know, at least it's got that fashion going on. Uh, grenade pistol, high utility, not great at killing because it has a very poor ammo economy. And it says it does 600 damage. But I don't know if I really trust that. Uh, it has a hard time dealing with bile spewers. It can kill a lot of tier one ads. 
It doesn't really kill Devastators all that effectively. I would use this thing if you are bringing no explosives in your build, but you still want to be able to deal with uh, bug holes or fabricators or just have a little bit of like extra grenade damage for like, you know, large groups of enemies. Uh, I found myself using it alongside like, let's say I'm bringing like the AMR and stun grenades and I wasn't bringing the Eruptor, let's say. I would bring the grenade pistol to take out, you know, those bug holes, open up those uh, caches in those POIs or like, you know, just to have something for like drop bot drops and stuff. So not bad. Um, I'd probably set it probably in the A tier just for pure utility standpoint. Uh, some people will probably value it more closer to S tier just because, you know, they typically don't have many uh, explosives in their build and they love stun grenades, let's say, or they bring snow smoke grenades for bots. Uh, but some people might value it lower because, you know, they always have the auto cannon on, so it's not very useful for them. Totally understandable. Going into the last weapon, we have the crossbow. I've had a love-hate relationship with this. I like that it's more damage than the Plastic Punisher. It's close cousin, but it doesn't feel all that effective because it lost all the stagger that the Plasma Punisher had. So I found it really hard to use effectively in bot missions. Uh, if you're being very precise, you can get a one tap to the faceplate, but because of the aggressive arc, because it's a crossbow, uh, it's not a consistent thing to do in like more than 50 meters. It's very difficult to do. And because the explosion doesn't have much stagger aiming for the legs of devastators doesn't have that much effectiveness. Uh, it takes quite a few shots to take out a group of devastators. Um, same for bugs. Uh, the higher tier enemies take a ridiculous amount of shots. I think it's four to five headshots uh, against a brood commander, which is really rough. Uh, at least I can one shot uh, hunters in a pretty large race. Seems around five meters radius. Uh, not bad. Uh, if you're someone who really likes the like explosive side of the game and getting to a high angle and shooting down on a lot of bugs, I think you'll have a lot of satisfaction with it. You know, for those new bug defense missions that are rolling around now, it's pretty good for that. But I would honestly say even the incendiary breaker with the host uh, dot bug would probably be even more effective. I, I think I, I I have to rate this lower. I'm not a stealth player, so I don't have any of the benefits of a stealth player in this. Maybe it's really good for stealth, but uh, I'm probably going to put it somewhere in the C tier for both bugs and bots. Uh, it's just, it, it needs some love. Um, uh, it, it needs some love. It, it needs probably more stagger. And I think it would be easily into the B tier. And if they gave it better damage versus like Bile Spears or Devastators, I'd probably put it even closer even to the high A or like the A's, low A's. Um, but until they do that, it's very niche at the moment. Some people will like it. Most people will hate it. It's going to be very similar to the Plasma Punisher in that regard. But I would rather use the Plasma Punisher because at least I'm staggering the shit out of all the enemies. So yeah. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed my recap of the Warbond. Uh, do let me know in the comments what you think uh, about my takes on it. I know I'm not 100% right on everything for every play style and everything. And I might be missing something that you've already learned. So let me know if there's something I'm missing. And consider dropping by the stream. I'm live every day, same place, same time. Much love. Peace out, YouTube.